AMD might already have the fastest CPU on the planet, at least in my opinion, but it looks like they're gonna be kicking Intel even while they're down. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Sihu and their Doro C300 ergonomic office chair. Listen, fellas, I've sat in my fair share of gamer thrones, and after long days of editing, I've learned a real office chair isn't a luxury, it's survival. The Doro C300 is one I actually find comfortable. The star is definitely the self-adaptive lumbar. See whose BM body movement tracking follows your lower back in real time. No knobs, no guesswork, so the support stays with you. The flexible triangular backrest shifts as you move to keep your spine aligned. And when it's time to lean back, you get 110, 120, or 130 degrees of recline. A weight sensing mechanism sets the tension automatically so it feels balanced instead of spring loaded. And arms, we're going 4D, whatever that means. Up, down, forward, back, pivot, and they sync with the backrest when you recline so your elbows don't drop out of support. Up top, the ultra wide 3D headrest adjusts for height, depth, and rotation and locks in place. The waterfall seat and breathable mesh help reduce thigh pressure and heat on long sessions. And yes, it's tested to BIFMA and TUV standards. So if you want a chair that adapts nicely to all your movements, check out the Sihu Doro C300 in the description below and use code YT6OFF for an additional 6% discount. Okay, so look, yes, I get it. Intel definitely still has some great value options out there. And there's certainly great CPUs coming out from Intel still to this day, but let's face it, the 9950X3D and the 9800 x 3 d well, those CPUs, fellas, they are just, well, they're really, I'd say the fastest CPUs that money can buy today. And it's no wonder why people are flocking to Amazon and other retailers to pick these CPUs up. But what if I told you this is not all they have to offer? Well, potentially this year, but at least by early next year. Well, yeah, it looks like the 9950X3D 3 d as fast as it already is. Well, it might be getting replaced by the 9950X3D Two, yes, of course, what great naming. They're just slapping it to on the end. But what is this? How fast is it gonna be? And what are the specs gonna look like? Well, let's jump into it. Now, this information I actually first found posted over on videocards.com, and it looks like it originates from the Twitter leaker Chili Dog. Now, take this with a grain of salt, of course, and I even did see some people disputing this, so we'll have to wait and see whether or not this happens, but we won't have to wait long because it sounds like they're planning on potentially releasing it soon. But according to this leaker, it looks like the 9950X3D is gonna be coming with increased power and increased cache. And then we also have the 9850X3D, which is gonna be a clock speed bump for the 9800X3D. But let's jump into the chart so that I can fully break this down and we can figure out what to expect out of these CPUs. So let's start with the 9850X3D. So like I mentioned, yes, it's basically a 9800X3D, which is currently the best gaming CPU that you can buy in my opinion and it's gonna have these same eight cores and 16 threads, but the clock speeds are gonna be jumping from 5.2 to 5.6 gigahertz, and this means that yes, there will be a gaming performance increase due to that increased clock speed. Now, in terms of the cache, it's gonna be the same. Pretty much everything else is gonna be the same. So this one, not super exciting, but hey, I'll take it. But now let's talk about the 9950X3D2. This is the CPU that I have been waiting for. Honest to God, if this had released already, I definitely would have purchased it and I'm already considering purchasing the CPU when and if it comes out. Now this CPU is gonna be very similar to the 9950X3D except for you might be scratching your head because despite the same core count, well, it's showing a 100 megahertz reduction from 5.7 to 5.6 gigahertz. And yeah, that sounds pretty weird, but there's actually a good reason for it. Well, one of the core clusters on the 9950X3D is actually not a 3D cluster, so it doesn't have the extra extra cash. Now, in most scenarios, this doesn't really matter, but there are times where unfortunately a game gets put or another application gets put onto the cores that do not have the extra cash. They want the extra cash and it leads to a pretty significant reduction in the performance. Now, AMD has been working on this on the driver side. 
to make sure this happens less and less, and it shouldn't really be happening too often at all, but it still can. And look, in those scenarios, this new CPU might not just be 10% faster, it might be 30% faster in those select scenarios. And this also means the total amount of cash, well, it's gonna be going up from the 64 plus 64, which is 128 megabytes of cash, to now 64 plus 128 or 192 megabytes of cash. That's a massive increase in cash over the original. And yes, this will also lead to, in some select scenarios, some pretty significant performance gains. But back to that clock speed, why is this a reduction? Well, because that older core cluster that didn't have 3D cache in the 9950X 3D, because it didn't have it, well, it meant that they could actually boost those clocks a little bit higher. However, it looks like this new CPU, since both of the core clusters are gonna have 3D cache, well, you can't quite reach that same clock speed on the cores that have the cache. It requires more power and the extra power and voltage can become a problem when you're sandwiching cores and cache together at a certain point. So what I'm telling you is, fellas, this is actually not really a regression in, I mean, sure, it is a regression in clock speed, but when you're actually gaming, your clock speed's probably gonna go from five or 5.2 on the older one, maybe 5.3 to now 5.6 gigahertz. So don't think of this as a clock speed reduction. Think of this as a clock speed gain, because actually the cores with cache will be running faster. 5.6 gigahertz on cores with cache, that's really good and very, very impressive stuff. However, now let's talk about the performance and the release date. So these CPUs, well, I do suspect the 9850X3D because it is gonna have higher clock speeds, will be around 10% faster, maybe a little bit less, but somewhere close to that. It's just, Higher clock speeds, that's it. All right, but what about the 9950X3D2? Well, this thing, it has higher clock speeds and more cash. So, you know, look, once again, I would expect at least 10% more performance. And actually, we'll go ahead and jump into a little bit more of a deeper dive in just a second here, but let's talk about the release dates first. So I am hearing that potentially CES of 2026, which is actually coming up real fast. I mean, that's gonna be coming right around the corner here, guys, is potentially where these things will be shown off. Now, will they actually be shown off there? Well, there's been a lot of rumors about this, so I would err on the side of probably yes, but we still don't know for sure. So keep that in mind. But now let's jump back into that performance. If you were to buy this thing, I mean, how much faster would it really be than the 9950X3D in a game? Well, looking at a 12 game average on an RTX 4090 at 1080p, it looks like the 9950X3D is getting 216 frames per second on average and a 158 1% low. However, I actually believe if we throw in the 9950X3D2 and keep in mind, this, this stuff that I'm throwing in here is based off of mathematical calculations and some speculation. Of course, this is not coming from TechSpot themselves, so don't yell at them if this turns out to be wrong. You yell at me. But I would suspect that you should actually see this jump from 216 to 238 frames per second on average, and I actually think you'll see more than a 10% increase on the 1% lows due to the extra cash as well as the extra bandwidth between the dual chiplet CPU finally being realized. So I think you could potentially potentially see as high as 184 frames per second on the 9950X 3D2, or roughly a 15% increase on the 1% lows. And what this means is you can finally have your no compromise CPU. It'll be the best for gaming, the best for content creation, the best for everything. So if you've been waiting to buy a CPU, it might be worth waiting to buy this one as well. But maybe it'd actually be worth waiting even longer for Zen 6. And of course, I'll keep you guys updated on that as well. And of course, also make sure to get subscribed as I will be heading to CES once again this year. I'll be sure to let you know everything that I can about these CPUs. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the 9950X3D2 will exist or do you think that it's gonna end up not being true? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.